Welcome everybody to Catfish Weekly presented by Whisker Wear Apparel along with Doc Lang. I'm Lyle Stokes. Doc, we got a bunch of stuff to go over tonight. We got three guys going to be on here with us Brad Cox, Steve Douglas, and Glenn for Greg Raps. And we got a bunch of stuff to talk about. Yeah. Yes, we do. Uh, you, we was talking before the show that it's kind of warm in Ohio. How's it going over there? Yeah, the humidity's way up. It rained a little bit today. Well, we got feedback real bad. Yeah, we do now. We sure do. Uh, Brad, if you could turn your volume down some more, that'd be awesome. See if that helped any. Yeah, that helped some. We'll give her a go and see how it works. Uh, let's go. Let's go ahead and get in here with Brad and see what we got going. Brad, welcome to Catfish Weekly, and we need to find out everything we can about your fishing catfishing for veterans tournament coming up in Springfield, Illinois. Uh, absolutely. Well, thanks for having me on again. But uh, this year is going to be the second Catfish for Veterans tournament. It's going to be September 10th at Lake Springfield. Uh, sign up starts about 5.45 in the morning at the Lindsay Bridge. So uh, be there. You don't have to pre-register, pre-sign up. Just uh, show up. We'll get you signed up and get you a chance to win. But we got a lot of great sponsors this year, just like we had last year. And uh, a lot of people seem really interested, so I think it's going to be an even better turnout than last year. That's outstanding. Now, can people pre-register for this event? Um, you know, I was going to, but I'm having the, some trouble with uh, getting the website uh, up and going, getting all that hooked up. So um, we're not going to do any pre-registration this year just because of that fact. But, uh, but okay. no worries. You can uh, just get there the same day and uh, sign up. It'll be just fine. That's great. So you can go to the Lindsay Bridge uh, boat ramp there, uh, Lake Springfield, Illinois boat ramp, and you can be entered in this. And man, what a great cause this is for. Yeah, it's really great. It's uh, for those that don't know, it's to benefit the Spring Street Veterans Renaissance, which is a uh, a veteran shelter in Springfield. But it just uh, it's a unique. They house veterans from all over the country, and it's uh it's not just a shelter, it's a transitional housing program where they help them get back on their feet and get them any sort of help or training they need and you know help them get jobs and even find a find a place to live. So it's it's a it's a pretty unique place and uh with the with the funding the way it is everywhere, but it's, you can imagine how it is in this state. I'm sure you watch the news. Uh they can use all the help they can get. Well, that's exactly right. And and those guys deserve any kind of help that we can get them any way or shape or form that we can get them, uh, get them assistance. And I can't think of a better cause than, than to help our military guys and gals out. Uh, and man, we really appreciate what you guys are doing over there. And I'm glad to see that the, the catfishing community is getting behind you with this because you got a bunch of great stuff going on over there. And uh, I, I, now does a percentage of this or does all of the entry money go to this cause? Uh, a percentage of it, half of the entry fees go towards uh, the payout of the top three, and then the other half goes directly to the shelter. And then we've also got the uh, the big raffle that we do, and 100% of those uh, proceeds from the raffle go to the shelter too. And by doing that last year, we raised, you know, just right out about $4,000 for the first tournament. So it was pretty good, and this year's going to be going to be even bigger. Absolutely wonderful, and I know you got a bunch of people that's helped you out with prizes and different things like that, and and uh, that's that's really good. Now, do you have all the help that you're going to need to do this? Yeah, oh yeah, I've got uh, you know people lined up willing to help. Uh, this year, one of the local VFW uh, from the next town over in Chatham, the guys offered to to come over and provide the food, you know, pay for it and cook it and everything for. Uh, after the tournament, what we get with the prizes, so everyone's got something to eat. So, even oh, if you wow. even if you can't fish, come on over and uh, watch the weigh in. You know, Shout grab out. something to eat and uh, enjoy the good times. That'd be something, wouldn't it, Doc? If we could make it over there and get in on some of that yeah. food. Oh yeah, I'm all about food. That's for sure. Yeah, me too. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> me too. Me too. I hardly ever miss a meal. In fact, I fish, don't ever fishing miss one. and food. Well, <laughs> you guys come on down. It's it's uh you know right before uh, Mississippi River Monsters. You can just uh, swing by on your way. 
that'd be that'd be a good time for sure. I know a lot of the guys that's going to be over there fishing that tournament, and, and you got pretty good field of, of participants coming in over there. Yeah, I, th I think we do. Uh, we got, uh, you know, last year it was the same day as Mississippi River Monster, so there was, uh, and there was there was a lot of boats that couldn't show up because uh, you know obligations to that. So I think we're going to have a lot of those guys this year, which should make it. Uh, make it pretty tough which was probably the only reason uh, me and my partner you know uh, won big fish last year was uh because a lot of those guys were gone so a little uh, tougher this year it's a pretty good field of guys just from your local area over there oh yeah it's always it's always tough fishing around here some sometimes it's it's pretty pretty disheartening when you go to a tournament and see everyone showing up and you think man i wish i wish they wouldn't have showed up just this one time give somebody a chance but <laughs> Now, where's it being held at? Uh, Springfield, Illinois, on Lake Springfield. On Lake Springfield, okay. Yep, and that's right off uh, Interstate 55. What date did you say? September what? September 10th, Sunday, the September 10th. Oh, okay. It's I'm, a, it's I'm a, looking at my calendar. <laughs> that's a really good, uh, good lake to catch some giant channel cat in, Doc. You'd be right at home. There's some flatheads in there, and there is some big blues that's been put in there over the years, but it's well known for its channel catfishing. Oh, cool. Yep, it's 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 uh it's good fishing. We had uh, we had some pretty good weights last year, and um, even uh, you know we had so many prizes to give away last year that even you know people that didn't win anything walked away with uh, some prizes. We had a a team I won't mention them because uh, they probably don't want me to, but they uh, they're usually in the money and quite a bit of tournaments and they didn't weigh in a single fish and they they still walked away with a two hundred dollar gift card so uh, no, ain't nothing wrong with that. Cool. no yeah. no not at all nothing yeah. wrong with that sometimes it pays more to be lucky than good <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> that's that's the truth so yeah if, yeah if you uh if you come out you got you got a good chance uh uh going home with uh, with a pretty good prize you know whether you weigh in good fish or not Absolutely. Now, I, I know a bunch of guys from that area and think pretty highly of several of them. Joe Lucky and Jerry Klein, Jerry Jr., uh, uh, Bill Parfit and Jason Rath, and uh, a lot of those guys over there at Springfield, Illinois, and I'm sure most all of them will be there. Oh, yeah, yep. I think uh, I, I think they're all going to make it this year, which is good. Like I said, most of them uh, were down in Mississippi last year, so this will be mm -hmm. the first one. You know, I get a get a lot of help from those guys giving me advice and uh were razzing me more than anything with Rath really? and Marfitt, I, I, I cannot imagine I Jason yeah. Rath and Bill Marfitt and them guys giving you any kind of grief whatsoever. I know it's hard to believe, isn't it? It is <laughs> <laughs> but uh, it really is. You know, all the, the all the Tangle with Catfish guys, they're great and you know, Jerry gives us a bunch of yep. rods to give away at the tournament. Uh, yep. You know, which is which is great. I think the first uh, the first three people last year they got to uh, got to pick a prize off the table. They all picked uh, TWC rods, so they they go pretty quick. Yep. Well, you know, Jerry's really really stepped up here in the last few years, and and has been donating a lot of great quality prizes to a lot of events. And uh, we're all very pleased that he's doing that because it's it's good to see companies giving back, and he's one that does, and his whole family is like that. And uh, we thank them so much for everything they do. Uh, and, and, you know, we talk about Bill Parfit and Jason Rath a lot and give them a lot of grief, but it wasn't a matter what you needed at that tournament. If you needed something, them two would be there making sure to make it happen. No, oh, absolutely. Yeah, that's what's, that's what's great about the, you know, that whole that whole group of guys. You know, you could ask them, ask them for anything, and they'd pretty much drop what they're doing to come help you out. Yep. So, unless they, Bill unless they were fishing. Another one. Yeah. 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 Oh, Bill Blankenship and Rusty and uh, Tarzan, all them guys are like that. Every one of them, they, they just, they go out of their way to make sure everybody gets what they need. And, and uh, it's just a great bunch of guys. And there's a lot of others. They're just the ones that come up my head right off the bat, but good bunch of people from over there. And I know that it's going to be a great success. It is. And uh, yeah, it, it's going to be good, especially with, uh, some of the stuff we got this year, we got Sea Arc, uh, and uh, S and R Marine gave us some more money for the you know top Sea Arc finisher this year. So there's five hundred dollars added money if you got a Sea Arc, come on down and fish and, and try to win Heck that yeah. too. 
Yeah, yeah that's that's really good. And S and R is a great sponsor to have in any tournament type thing. They've been really good people. Uh, they're they're a great company. They they help the catfishing community along with others, but but catfishing is what we're dealing with. So yeah, they're they're a really nice company to deal with, and I'm glad to see them being a part of that. Yep, that's great. That's great having uh, all the all the local support from the places here, and then you know other other people in the in the catfish world. You know, you just send them a message, and you know about 80, 90 percent of them you know message you right back. You know, she's saying yeah, they'd love to help and. Send, send a lot of stuff to give away yep that's that's really cool and that's what it should be like you know uh, uh there's some things that you can and can't do but when you're talking about our veterans you, you just got to go out of your way to make sure that you're doing the right thing right i, I completely agree so is there any rule stipulations or anything that you need to tell us about uh no, it's um Pretty standard, I guess, for what we do on Lake Springfield. It's going to be six, uh, six catfish, uh, <laughs> channels, blues, or flatheads. Um, but this year, we're going to do something just a little bit different. We're going to do uh, – this will be the first time I've announced it. But we have a, an anonymous donor who's given us $100 to give away to, to anyone except for the top three. So we're going to do a smallest catfish this year. So there's going to be no, uh, no minimum length. But, you know, as long as it's one that you can uh, catch on a hook. Yeah. But uh, so we'll have $100 for the uh, team with the smallest fish this year, which is nice. So six catfish, nice. um, they all got to be alive, you know, kept in alive well. No, no stringers or baskets, anything like that. Pretty, pretty standard rules. Awesome. 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 That, that's great to know now. Do you have a uh, do you have a list of sponsors and stuff that that you can tell us about? I do. I've got. Uh, yeah, you. If you got to run to the bathroom or go get you something to drink, you might want to because there's a. <laughs> I got a lot of them this year. Well, that's but okay. Like I, yeah, I mentioned. Uh, yeah, Sea Arc and S and R Marine. They're donating money to the top Sea Arc finisher. Uh, Tangle with catfish rods. We're gonna have those. Uh, Cabela's is back on board this year. They gave me a. Uh, Couple uh, spinning combos, a um, couple sets of fish grippers, and some nice soft Brown and his big easy quest. They donated three sets of those new uh, clip and coal coal systems um, that are seem to be all the rage. You see them all over Facebook. Uh, so I got three of those to give away. Um, Eagle Claw sent us almost two thousand hooks. Wow! Um, that wow. Were, yeah. Yeah, we're going to try to give all those away. Um, uh, when I was down at the Catfish Conference, you know, I met uh, a lot of guys who, who were interested. Uh, Matt Miles with Catfish Clothing, you know, he's sending a pretty good donation and a lot of uh, some gear to give away. Uh, Whisker Wear Apparel, I know you're pretty familiar with them. I am. Uh, they're going to give us some stuff. Even George Young Jr. sending some of his uh, new tackle. To give away, Fish Bite Rod Holders is sending a whole set of eight rod holders to outfit an entire boat. So someone uh, might get lucky and win that. Uh, Drift good. Masters yeah. sending some rod holders. Now Yeti, we're doing the uh, big Yeti cooler giveaway again this year uh, for the raffle, 65 quart Yeti cooler full of tackle. And I believe we're still getting a uh, Black Horse custom rod with that to give That's away. Correct. All right. And they also sent a lot of uh, – a lot of their uh, cups and hats and stuff to give away. And uh, the people at uh, Rig Wrap, you know, I message, message them and they're sending a, a huge donation where, I mean, everyone's getting something from Rig Wrap uh, that, that shows up to the tournament. Uh, Tim at Whisker Sticks, he's going to send us some lights. Uh, Hooker's Terminal Tackle, they sent me a big, big box of hooks. This Newt's Fishing from Minnesota got a hold of me and they sent me some braided line and a bunch of hooks. Uh, TTI Blakemore, they produce like Daiichi hooks. Uh, they're sending us a package. They sent us like 700 hooks last year to give away. Wow. Uh, Chris Flores with Muddy River, uh, he told me to give him a message about a month out and he's going to send a bunch of stuff. Um, we got a, a guy here that makes these uh, big cat bobbers, pool noodle bobber, bobbers. We're going to have those. We got water bugs and a set of planer boards. Um, you know, Daniel Kennedy, I know you know him. He won I a uh, he won a set of those uh, clear boards, planer boards. 
Uh, he donated a set of those to give away. Cool. And we got uh, Big Red's Bait and Tackle local here. They uh, give us a bunch, a bunch of tackle to put in the, the cooler that we're giving away. And on top of that, we got some local businesses. Landmark Ford here donated two auto detail packages. So I know anyone that uh, catfishes and gets in their car afterwards probably use a good detail job on it. <laughs> and then uh, got a local family farm and some insurance companies, Northwater Consulting, Thorn Creek Insurance, uh, Bailey Family Insurance, uh, all donating uh, gift cards and you know anything they can do to help out. So. Uh, that right there is uh, a lot of stuff uh, in itself. So. Man, well, you, come on out and try to win it. Well, you just landed another one of our sponsors here on uh, Catfish Weekly. Crusher Marine uh -huh. said that they would like to sponsor six survivors. Oh, awesome. So get a hold of Robert. Absolutely, I will. Well, thank you very much. That's, that's, uh, that's, that's good stuff. You know, that's just like we keep saying, Doc. These are, these people in this sport, they step up and oh, do yeah. what they need to do and make sure things are happening. And thank you, Robert, so much for that. And all the other people that have donated uh, prizes and stuff for this because it's so important. These guys have done everything for us. And uh, it's very little ass that we do and give back just a little bit. Right. Uh, one thing I wanted to add about the – the raffle, like I said, we got a 65 quart Yeti cooler full of tackle and the Black Horse custom rod. We did the same thing last year. It was about around $1,100 value. But just so anyone watching knows, you don't have to be present to win. So if you just want to get a hold of me uh, on Facebook uh, through, you know, Brad Cox or Catfish for Veterans and get some tickets. I mean, we can do it PayPal and I'm going to uh, pay to ship it out to if somebody wins it that's not local or not within driving distance so so you can win that and have it shipped right to your door if you do, if you want to buy some Heck raffle tickets wow that's, that's cool. outstanding man that, that's that's really uh stepping up and making it happen you know uh brad i, I want to tell you we're all so pleased at what you're doing over there and i know you work really hard to make this event what it is and it's really a cool deal that you step up and spend your time and effort and and make this happen and this is your second year and i i tell you i think people are going to be looking forward to this event well i hope so i hope it's something uh, that we can keep doing uh year in year out if, uh, if my wife lets me <laughs> that is it, it takes up a lot of time <laughs> Oh, yeah. It does, but I'm sure that she understands how important what you're doing is also. Oh, yeah. Yep. Yeah. She's, uh, she's, she's completely behind it as, uh, as long as I can, uh, you know, put the, put the phone down and stop answering uh, messages about it and things like that. Absolutely. And that's, uh, that's part of doing a deal like that. And, and we all understand that. Some people don't get it, but but uh, most of us do understand, uh, and, and I know it's a lot of work, and, and we appreciate everything that you do to make this happen every year. Well, thanks. I, I appreciate you guys uh, letting me come on and get the word out. Um, that, that's, that's, that's a big help in itself. Well, we're glad to do it. And any time that you have something like this going on, please feel free to get a hold of us, and we'll, we'll make it happen for you. Absolutely. Should All right, Brad, thank you so much for spending your time tonight with us. If there's anything you need on this end, if we need to do something in the future, be sure and let me know. And we'll make it happen. All right, guys, I definitely will. Again, I appreciate you uh, letting me come on. And anyone watching, if you got any questions about Catfish for Veterans, go ahead and get a hold of me or the Facebook page and ask away or get some raffle tickets or whatever. We'll get you hooked up with whatever you need. Okay. Good absolutely. Deal. That's that's what we need to do, and, and thanks for everything you do, Brad. All right. Thank you, guys. Have a good show. Thanks, Brad. All righty, bud. Thanks. Yep. And that's a heck of an event they have over there, Doc. They, they work really hard. Brad puts a lot of time and energy into that thing, and it's really neat that he spends his time and, and efforts and getting all this stuff going so we can, can have events like this, and uh, uh, it's just really neat. We're glad that, that – uh, that he does that and, and that people like him step up to the plate and, and do stuff like that. Yeah. And his list of sponsors was outstanding too. Yeah. It's, it's some great people in the business. I mean, uh, 
quality products from quality people and that's what makes them so so good uh, for our sport is what they they are doing and and uh, i'm really thrilled that uh, that he's doing that and, and a lot of other people so uh he, he got he got some good stuff going on over there it'll be a lot of fun i you know i'm i'm not sure what we've got going on that weekend i i hope that uh that we can make it happen but uh, we'll see how that works out. It seems like some of these events, there's only so many weeks in a in a uh, year, or so many weekends, and there's there comes a time when something don't always make it. But I would really like to be over there, and even if we didn't fish it, I'd like to be over there just to hell. I'd like to go over there just to see old Parf and Raff. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, oh man, there's so much fun. There's so much fun. Welcome to Catfish Weekly, Steve Douglas. Hey, Lyle, how you doing? I'm good, man. How are you doing? I'm dragging, my man. I'm dragging. <laughs> are you now? Yeah. We got um, we got the word at, that that you're putting on or affiliated with a pretty big tournament coming up here next weekend. Well, yeah, yeah. It's it's my baby. I I wish I had some partners in it. Take some of the stress off of me, but it is what it is. <laughs> I understand. Well, man, I'm glad that you're doing it. It looks like it's going to be a big turnout and a lot of fun. Well, we're looking forward to it. Uh, I, I have a lot of respect for some tournament guys nowadays. <laughs> uh, how did I put this out on my plate? But, yeah, I think it's going to be a, a pretty decent event. I do, too. Yeah. It's uh, be fun. Yeah, oh, yeah, there's no doubt about it. Why, why don't you tell us all the specifics about it now? Uh, I know that it's a night tournament. But other than that, I really don't know a whole lot about it, Steve. Well, this one here is just going to be a little bit different than, than most tournaments, per se. And I don't want anybody to take this the wrong way, but I'm not doing it for the anglers as much as I'm doing it for the spectators. I've, nice. spent, I've spent quite a bit of money to, to get spectators to come down to this event to, to cheer for the anglers. So we've got 35 signed up right now. I figure there's going to be another 20, 25 or more. And uh, we, we're going to be giving prizes away to the spectators that come claim their raffle tickets that we're giving away. All right. Oh, okay. But is this this? Um, I don't even know what day this is. What is it? Uh, today's today is Monday. Yeah, Monday. Today is Monday the tenth. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I'm pulling double shifts trying to catch keep up with my monster rod and, and do this stuff too and. You got to get permits, and yeah, when you get the state involved and, and all, it oh, yeah. becomes a. When I when I, yeah, when I put banks on, man, I didn't know there was so much paperwork that had to be done. Oh yeah, because I had I had the state of Ohio, I had the state of West Virginia, had the city of Gallipolis, and just everybody didn't cost me nothing, but it just you know filling out the paperwork. Well, the insurance I had to deal with some insurance today, but other than that, it's it's all good. Everybody wants their hand in that insurance in case anything happens. So, oh yeah, we had to but name. But you can't connection. blame them. <clears throat> no, no. Well, we've got some gators that some a guy has uh, donated um, to run the fish back and forth from the way in back down to the water. Uh, we've got some golf carts, some some big golf carts that the guys have donated, <laughs> so we can run people up. And down. <laughs> Because it is, you know, if the parking does overflow, then it's up a hill, a, a good walk. And a guy like me don't need to be walking up a hill like that. <laughs> yeah. I completely understand. Right. <clears throat> but yeah, we're uh, we're 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 doing. Uh, like I say, I, I want to make this a little bit different. I want, you know, like Aaron Wheatley, he's got a big crowd. He, he's been, and he's got the city behind him. Of course, I've got the city of Taylorsville on board with me and, and uh, the state park. So hopefully it's going to be a, a, a pretty nice event for everybody. We've got a bank fishing yeah. tournament as well. And that's something different. Nobody else has done. Uh, we've got a lot of YouTubers coming down to fish the event, uh, which I think is going to be pretty fun. But when I let, when I turn the boats loose at nine o'clock, about nine 15, we've got a lot of bank fishermen that, that's called wanting to just come down and, and fish. And uh, we've got some nice prizes for them as well and it don't cost them nothing it's going to be free for them that's nice mm -hmm. 
I just got a message on Facebook, Steve, from Jason Geary. He says that uh, he thinks it's amazing what you're doing for fishing this weekend, and and uh, he's going to be there with bells on. Well, that's awesome. Well, I'm hoping, uh, you know, we've got plenty of room. I've got insured for 100 boats, so like I say, we don't have it 35 at this point, but if everybody comes and says they're going to come, uh, <clears throat> well, we'll have a pretty good event. Now, I'll tell you, I, I don't know what the deal is, but I don't know if it's my brand, Captain Mad Jack or what, but it's attracting a lot of new people, and that was the whole plan with this. <clears throat> That's good. That's good. Yeah. I've had a lot of guys call and say, you know, that, you know, they don't fish the Cabela's and, and the other big ones because they're a little bit intimidated, but I, I don't know. Like I say, I don't know if it's the little cartoon guy I got that just makes them feel uh, like they can come compete. And, and I know they can. It's anybody's game at Taylorsville. Nobody has ever put on a, a tournament at this event. I talked to Carl Morris Jr. this morning, and he, he's been over there. and He's kind of excited because it's a new lake nobody has ever fished before. So That's, that's a good thing. Mm -hmm. I might know it would be on my work weekend, too. I wish you could come, Doc. It would have been fun. I, know. I, I, I was looking forward to it until I seen the date. So, sorry. Uh, well, we'll see how this one goes, and, and if I got enough energy, I'm going to do another one next year. I had one ready to go next year, and, and but I accidentally did it on your date, so I'm going to have to back up, see what I can do about that. Oh, well, man. I, yeah, second week in May. Yeah. Well, hopefully we can get it lined out to where we can make the next one. Uh, I really would have liked to come down there for it. We just had other obligations, and I kind of got to go to them. Uh, but, uh, yeah, I, I think it's a wonderful thing. I'm excited with the fact that you're involving the spectators and the bank guys and giving everybody a shot at doing something and having a good time. And now you're having some events for kids. Is that right? No, it's just pretty much the bank fishing. We're just going to – The bank yeah, fishing, bank okay. Fishing. Uh, you know, this thing is still, you know, a family-oriented thing. Uh, now, the whole reason behind it was just to introduce new people to the sport and to introduce them what I'm going to call the proper way. Uh, mm -hmm. You know, let's, let's, let's educate them on catch and release. Let's, let's educate them on the, the need for uh, selective harvest or management, per se, and get them start, started on the right way. Because, you know, if they get down the wrong path, uh, you know, they, they can they can be detoured off of, off of the, the proper way. Oh, I agree with that. I agree yeah. 100%. Now, Chris Jenkins has got a question. He goes, I'm curious about the slot limit. Is it one blue and one channel over 25 per person? Well, the thing of Taylorsville is, and their, their, their thinking is, a lot of guys can't tell between a channel cat and a blue cat when, when they're small like that. So there's one blue cat or one channel cat per person over 25 inches. Okay. Yeah, one or the other. You can't have both. Uh, but recently, I've just discovered that there's no limit on flatheads over there. So we have put we've put some regulations on that. You know, you could have caught I could have just you could have caught five if you wanted to. But I went ahead and did what the Kentucky does, and it's one flathead over 35 inches per person. So you can have one, two blues over 35, or 25, I'm sorry, or two flatheads over 35. Okay. Combine them together. Now, Bink, uh, Bink contacted me. He wants to know, what time does a restaurant open? Restaurant? Yeah. I don't know anything about a restaurant. Okay, and he said he wanted to know what time the bait store opened. I don't know anything about a bait. Carl Morris Jr. is the bait store. Okay. All right. <laughs> um, I, 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 that's what he asked me to ask you. Now, well, there's a, there is a little bait store up the, the block there, about four or five miles from the, the event. Um, and I'd say it's like a little country store. But, you know, when he's coming in, I'd say that it's, it's probably going to be open. Okay. The guys ain't going to show up. The registration don't start till 5 p.m. What's, your, what's the hours? Where does it go? Five. Five. Okay, so. Registration starts at 5 p.m. We're going to turn boats loose at 9 p.m. And they got to be back in at uh, 8 p.m. in the morning. 
All right, 8 a.m. I'm sorry. You got to forgive me, man. I'm working on no sleep right now. <laughs> <laughs> now, is this, is this Friday night or Saturday night? It's a Friday night tournament. Okay. And it, the way in is going to be Saturday morning. And I, the reason I did that was most guys go to church on Sunday morning. And like I say, the whole thing for this was to get spectators to the, the event and, and new new people to the event. So yeah. Saturday it had to be. So I'm hoping it works out in my the way I plan it. So uh, we we'll, we'll see. Like I say we've got a we've got a lot of interest in it. Well, you've got some pretty big names signed up already. Yeah. Yeah, we sure do. And we've got, you know, people coming from Ohio. I think there's actually one guy wanting to drive up from Georgia. Nice. So it, it's going to be a lot of fun. So are you going to have a – go ahead, Doc. I know Willie's at uh, Watts Bar right now, and he's coming over on Wednesday to start fishing. Wow, man. I'm going to tell you what. I, I seen Willie somewhere last year in a tournament. I don't remember where it was at, but he had just come off about a three-day stint on Watts Bar that day. And he went to another tournament. So, yeah, he, he's a maniac. And then Chris Souders tells me the other night he's he's going to fish my event, and then to go turn around and fish an Ohio Hills event Saturday night. Saturday night, yeah, yeah, wow, <laughs> yeah, wow. I you know I did that back in my younger days, but <clears throat> yeah, no, I didn't. No, I didn't can't do it no more. That's true. Uh, no. So, yeah, us old, part us of old guys need some sleep. That and rest, it, it catches up with you. I used to be like that when I was a lot younger. Boy, I, we didn't. Lynn and I both did marathons. And not, uh, uh, not now. <laughs> I remember. I remember back in the day when, when everybody, had, you know, it, it's. I guess it's fun. I don't know. I might be. I might just be in it for a long time. But I remember them old good old days, and they were just so much fun. I don't yeah. say I, I say I don't have, still don't have fun, but I guess when I was just starting out back 10, 15 years ago, it was just it's all new to me, so it was exciting. But there you go. Fifteen years will do a lot to a man. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> that is a fact. That's but a fact. I, I know how these younger guys feel. I mean, I I know they get all excited and probably can't sleep the night before a tournament. Uh, man, that's the way I was. If I had a tournament, I was psyched up two days beforehand. And then yeah. the night before, and then come tournament day, I'm falling asleep in my chair. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. Now, the night before a tournament, my pet, my head hits a pillow and I'm out. I you know, get up real slow to go in the morning. Well, I had a guy the other day ask me, he says, what, what's a, a, some good advice you would give to a new new guys coming into this tournament and that's one of the first things i've talked about don't stay out there in the hotel parking lot talking to your buddies till midnight one o'clock in the morning go in there and get some sleep at 10 o'clock get up at four or whatever um another another good thing is don't eat you a big steak dinner the night before the tournament <laughs> <laughs> If you want a steak dinner or lobster dinner or something, you, you better be getting that after the fact. Uh, yeah. <laughs> do not do it the night before. <clears throat> that is for sure. Yeah. Because there ain't no bathrooms out there on that lake. And on the river. No, <laughs> no. there is not. No, there's not. But it is, you know, I, I, yeah. Staying out in motel, Steve, is uh, outside there and everybody's around. It's it's a lot of oh, fun, we, man. Yeah, we have a lot of – well, and you learn a lot. You know, when you're talking to a lot of the guys, you're learning different techniques. And the guys are just kind of laid back, and they'll yeah. talk. And, you know, just I, – I, I like that stuff. I always have. I do, too. Me, too. Well, it, it's fun. The, you you got to – at some point – you got to quit listening to all the lies because there's some bunch of lies out there too. Now. <laughs> <laughs> there's a lot of guys that like to, you know, try to psych you out. And then you yeah. put in there trying to, uh, try to decipher all that stuff that they just told you. <laughs> but some of it, some of it's probably true, but a lot of it is uh, that they're trying to deter you off of their, their game plan. 
Yeah, that's fact. Yeah, that's fact. And they may try to talk you into an adult beverage once in a while. Yeah. Yeah. I, I've seen some guys that was doing that late at night and didn't make the launch first thing in the morning. Oh, I've seen plenty of that before. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And they wonder why. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> there's well, no no wondering about it. There's a lot of fun. I mean, I, I I like to watch people too. You know, I've seen some crazy stuff go down at the Ramada Inn down there in, in Owensboro where. Aaron oh, oh, oh yeah. <laughs> Uh, they get a few a few drinks in them, and they have karaoke in it, and you know it, it's a lot of fun. But if you're really serious about it, you probably won't get your butt in bed kind of early and get up and get your business done. That's right. Yeah, that's right. Well, you know, like I say, we always have a great time at all them things, and I like standing outside and talking with everybody and sharing information and uh, trying to help some of the new guys and. Uh, I like visiting with the old guys because, you know, uh, if they're serious and most of them are, they'll, they'll give you information. And a lot of times it's something you have to read in between the lines. And, right. and uh, some people haven't figured that out. But if you really pay attention, you'll pick up some stuff that you may not get anywhere else. Right. Well, that, that's and, one of the uh, I invited a lot of these spectators three hours before the tournament takes off. Because, you know, they can come down and everybody's getting their boats ready and you can go down and just kind of talk with some of the guys. And, and I sure hope that, that the anglers that are there, um, you know, will, will take the time and kind of help some of these new guys out. Um, that's right. And then, and then, you know, after, you know, everybody weighs in, you know, that, that's another opportunity to say, hey, how'd you catch your fish? Uh, what was the technique? Things like that. So, you, yeah, you learn a lot night before and during and, and at the way in as, as well that's exactly right and, and like i say these people are glad to talk to these spectators and people that are starting out it's a wonderful thing to see them get involved with the sport and uh, i i don't know anybody uh that that uh, wouldn't be happy to visit with them yeah maskey drake wants to know if you're going to have a poly test on the winter you know, I'm looking at the polygraph test, and I, I'm still looking at a guy to come out and do it. There is a possibility if he gets free, and, and I, this all come to me today. Um, I've had a couple of phone calls of some new folks that have kind of raised some questions with me, and I wasn't going to, but, and, you know, the guy was probably, you know, just joking or, or something, but still, you know, it's on the back of your mind. But if yeah. this guy can, if this guy can make it, uh, and he's supposed to let me know tomorrow, then yes, there will be a polygraph. Okay. Chris Jenkins wants to know if, if anybody knows if the thermocline has sat in on Taylorsville Lake. Uh, yes. And if, if it was me going over fishing, I, I would not be fishing over 15 foot deep probably. Even if I'm sitting in 60 foot of water, I'm going to be fishing 15 foot deep. Now, it, it, it washed out a little. From what I understand, it, we had some high water a couple weeks ago, and it kind of washed out a little bit. But I talked to a guy today, and he said that there's the thermocline's definitely over there. Hmm. Nice. So, there's, you, know, there's some you, got, you got a lot of noodlers over there, and there's one reason I had it at night over here is because we got a lot of boat traffic that comes from Louisville. And uh, you can't fish in the daytime. Not at all. Maybe in the middle, middle of winter, you probably could, but the summertime, it's going to be a, you have to fish it at night. But a lot of those guys that fish them daggone noodles over there, they're not looking for them big fish. I mean, I've seen them catch, and they're, they're catching, you know, small fish, and they're not really baiting up for big fish either. You know, they're just, a lot of them using shrimp and chicken livers and things like that. Hot There's dog. a lot of three to five pound blues caught up out of there. So, but yeah, it's uh, there's a lot of standing timber over there. Stay in the channel. Um, you know, the Salt River is just like the Tennessee River. They just went in there and dammed it up. And there's a, a main river channel that kind of meanders through. But on each side of that, you've got big oak trees standing. And you may not see them. They're under the water now, but they're, they're definitely there. But that that's probably another place I'd, I'd probably concentrate on um, is that standing timber. Off to, off to the edges of the channel. 
And there's a lot of flats over there. You can get into some, you know, some pretty good flats. The lake isn't but about five or six miles long, I think. I can run it. I used to be able to run it in my other boat in about 12 minutes, something like that. This poor old new boat I got that I can't get in, it's going to take me a half hour to get up there now. So. That's outstanding. That's outstanding. It sounds, it sounds like, like a great time. time. Well, I'm, I'm hoping so. We've put a lot of time and effort into it. And, uh, you know, the main thing is just like the catfish conference is to get people there and get them involved. And uh, hopefully we can that's, educate that's, that's, people while they're, while they're uh, still new at it. Well, I'm excited for you. I think it's going to be a wonderful time. Like I said, I've been kind of close coming. And it looks like there's a, a great field going to end up showing up. And, and, and Steve, you know, uh, one thing that uh, Brad, uh, used to, Brad Kilpatrick used to say when he was holding the Kansas City Catfish tournaments, um, if he got 50 pre-entries, there would be half that many that would be, or more, usually more than that, uh, show up day at a tournament and sign up. So, uh, mm -hmm. You know, there's no telling how many will show up that's not even uh, you don't even know about. Well, like I say, I, I'm satisfied with the 35 boats I got right now because I think them guys can show the audience a big bunch of fish. And if we have another 50 boats show up, you know, I ain't gonna turn them away. Of course, it's more money for the anglers. Uh, it is 100% payback. Uh, but yeah, I, I just I want a big crowd. I mean, you guys have fished the Cabela's before, you know, and, and you, you, sometimes they have a crowd there. Sometimes they just got the anglers standing there, and it, it's you don't get a, the recognition or the, or the clapping that you would like you do at Aaron Wheatley's tournament. That's right. Uh, I mean, they get screaming and hollering at Aaron's tournament. I mean, you, you pull a big fish up out of there, and you know that's 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 what I want this to be about. Instead of a bunch of anglers that's... out there clapping for the guy that just whooped them, you know. <laughs> <laughs> I understand. I think yeah. the spectator mm -hmm. end of what we do is growing, and events like this will keep it growing and make it better every year. Yeah, yeah. Well, I think the Catfish Conference has proved that, really, you know, because I, I didn't imagine that people would travel that far distances just to be around other like-minded folks. Yeah. Um, but they, they sure do. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. It, it's definitely growing. Uh, that's for sure. Oh, yeah, it is. And, uh, you know, uh, as with anything like uh, any type of deal that we got going, you got some some elements that we don't all approve of. But for, oh, for the most part, overall, the catfishing community is a pretty night, not tight-knit group uh, of wonderful people. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that's for sure. I've, I've, I've witnessed it this year a lot. Uh you know, of course, with the way, you know, Binks, Binks event went, um, a, lot, a lot of people stepped up, and it was a cool thing. That's right. Oh, yeah. Yeah, it really is. And that's, that's what it's supposed to be. Yeah. But, yeah, we'll, we'll all have a good time. Uh, like I say, I've got a bunch of YouTubers coming down. Uh, I, I think I'm going to have probably just as many bank fishermen as I got boat fishermen. That's um, good. Yeah. Um, one thing I'm – I hate to even bring it up. I, I probably shouldn't, but I'm going to. I've, I've had a lot of I've had a lot of guys, new guys now, calling me, and they they want to get in a tournament. They've never got in a tournament before, and all they've done is fish pay lakes. But now they've purchased a boat, and they want to learn how to do this. Um, so I, I think that's great too. Maybe we can change some minds uh, about how the pay lakes are. Um, so that, that's, that's, that's that story right there. I mean, I, I'm not going to turn them down just because they say they fish pay lakes, but you know, a lot of them, I don't know, you know, in the internet world and Facebook world, everybody should know about it, but not everybody's on the internet and everybody's on Facebook. And, uh, you know, a lot of these guys probably may not even know that these big fish are being taken out of the rivers and stuff to be stopped in that pay lake. All they know is they go kick get some fish somewhere. Yeah. So well, you know, and we've got we've got a big sign that I've made, a big banner that I've made, 
uh, says release the beast, uh, catch and release, uh, let's spread the word kind of thing. So I'm, I'm really trying to instill this way of thinking into these new anglers, um, the catch and release and, and the, the management of these fish. Well, Steve, this is a perfect opportunity to, to help these guys understand how important it is. Well, another thing that kind of gets to me a little bit is, is all these, and I don't want to insult anybody, but I don't know how to even say it, but, you know, these guys get a passion for this industry. And say, for instance, right now, I had a guy about two weeks ago put a picture on my page, and I, I get a lot of that, but he had about five fish on the back of his tailgate, nothing over eight pounds probably. One little two pound blue cat, the rest of them, you know, just come up the line. And he got so much crap over catch and release. You should keep, you should only keep, and, and these fish were eaters. These fish were not meant, I mean, they, they, you know, and you just can't, you know, it is a resource. We need to manage the resource, but we cannot down people for keeping a few catfish. And and, and it, you can probably go on my post and look back on it and find it. And, and the guy probably, he, 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 always, he, he automatically just said, well, I'm not going to post any pictures anymore if this is what I'm going to get. And like I say, there wasn't nothing over eight pounds on the back of his tailgate. But he was so proud that he went out and caught these things and he used some of my methods to catch it. Um, you know, the passion that people have is fine, but we got to draw a line somewhere. I mean, if a guy can't keep five or six, five pounders to eat, you know, I, you know, the big fish, I understand, but you know, we gotta, we gotta draw the line on, on how we educate people on, on the fish. Does that make sense? That's right. It does. Yeah. It does to me now. Uh, I, I agree with that a hundred percent. I, and I think most all of us started out catching fish to eat. And I think we've all done things that we don't long, no longer do. That doesn't mean that it was necessarily wrong. We learned better. We, we don't do them things for our own personal reasons. And there'll be a lot of other guys that change that way of thinking. But there's always going to be some guys, and you shouldn't condone them for doing something as long as they're not breaking the law. Even though it may not be morally correct, Right. Uh, it, it, it's still, if they're not breaking the law, it's really hard to to say you can or can't or should or shouldn't do something, but, uh, you know, you don't have to agree with it. And, and a lot of it, I don't, but, uh, uh, Jason sent me another message said, if you convert one guy, then the whole thing is a success. And I agree with that. I really do. Uh, and if you get more than one, it's a huge success. Well, we, we do have several that, that has, you know, I, I they, they told me they're, the only time they ever fished a tournament was at a pay lake, and they want to try something out on the, the bigger water. And then, they, they, as I told you a while ago, I, I'm learning that a lot of these folks are intimidated by the Cabela's King Cat or the Bass Pros or the Monsters on the Ohio, you know, because, mm -hmm. you know, just jumping into it. But I, maybe this little, little cartoon guy I've come up with is just non threatening or something. And, and you know, it's drawn a lot of new folks, and, and that's for sure. But, you know, I'd like to say, I, I, I can understand people's passion on wanting to preserve the resource, but at the same hand, it is a resource that we should be able to, you know, we should be able to eat a few fish. That's right. Uh, and if this guy had, you know, five 30 pounders laying on the back of his truck, that'd be one thing. But these, these were little bitty two to eight pounders. And, um, yeah, the, the poor old guy got so fed up. He's like, I just ain't gonna post no more pictures anymore. <laughs> So it's sad that it's become that way. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But yeah, that's, I, really I really like to change it. I mean, like I say, there, there's a need for conservation, but you know, it is a resource that we should be able to enjoy too. And, you know, I figured I'd get a lot of flack from this bank tournament thing too, because um, I'm, a, I'm allowing stringers, but I'm only allowing stringers on fish under 15 pounds and I'm allow them to keep those fish if they catch them also. But anything over 15 pounds must be weighed in immediately and turned loose. Um, but, you know, if a guy comes out and working real hard and he catches a couple, you know, four, five pound, six pound fish, he wants to take them home, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to let him take them home and eat them because the resource is there for that. Uh, and, and now, 
did you say that there's no money involved in the bank fishing tournament? No, it's it's going to be free, but I've I've come up with a bunch of great prizes. Right. I'm still working on this thing. I did a video the other night of me working on them late late at night. And I finally got my pliers in. I've bought the pliers, but I've stacked a whole tackle box, a starter kit. And we're going to be giving all this away. I mean, I, I'd say this is going to be a $40 deal. And I've got 20 oh, yeah. things I'm giving away. Um, and, you know, it's like I say, it's for the new folks. And then I've got, um, I think, a, a rod and reel combo, a uh, tangle of catfish rod goes to the first place. Uh, one of these things uh, also got a deeper fish finder goes to first place. There's about two hundred sixty dollars going to first place. Pretty it's nice. A, it's a nice rod, rod and reel combo, uh, and we just got all kind of prizes from different sponsors and stuff. And like I say, most of it's going to go towards the. Now I've got some stuff that's the serious stuff that the catfish anglers are going to get. You know, I've got rod holders I'm gonna give away. I've got some big nets, uh, landing nets that. I'm going to have reserved for the, the anglers. Uh, but we got a lot of, you know, good sponsor prizes to give away to the spectators as well. And if we don't have any spectators, then I'm going to have a lot of tackle. That, <laughs> <laughs> I'm pretty sure you'll have some people there, Steve. Now, one thing I'm excited about, and, and I, I'm going to have to give a shout out to these guys because I, I don't know what happened. I just forgot all about them. But the old mud bum boys. They, uh, I, 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 I was down there doing my rod holders, and you get to do a lot of thinking when you're dipping rod holders one right after another. And I said, well, I didn't even contact the mud bum see if they want to be a part of this. So I called Crash the other night, and uh, he he come up with a few things. But what's cool about it, I'm going to be flying the mud bum flags on my stage, and, and I'm going all out on this stage. This stage is costing me about, uh, by the time I get all the banners and everything, we're probably looking at about $4,000 I'm just putting in on just decorating the stage just to make it look cool. But he sent me two mud bum flags that I'm going to be flying above the stage. And he signed, he signed both of them. All the boys signed them. And that's going to be when that towards the end of the day, uh, we're going to be giving the mud bum flags away too. So, and he gave me a couple well, other pretty, couple cool things. But, that's pretty good. Those are a good bunch of guys. I, I'm glad they're in the sport. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, they're, they're very good for the sport. I mean, they do a lot of other stuff too, but, um, I just like their message. I mean, cause, cause what they're doing was me back when I was a teenager. Now I've kind of lost track of that. Once you get older, I can remember when I was 15 years old, I'd run across anybody's field to get to the river. You just walk down and nobody cared. Yeah. But I guarantee you I walk across that field today to go down to that river and they're going to be shooting, no trespassing laws going to be called. I mean, it's, it's totally a different ball game. And I just don't have a, a, an access to the river bottoms and stuff anymore unless I got my boat. Uh, so that's why you don't see me bank fishing. But I just love their message uh, that, that they have. I mean, they're, they're just me 30 years ago, 40 years ago. Yep. Yep. Hey, uh, I agree. I'm Steve, uh, Major Brown wants to know, Steve, how do you come up with the tournament name Captain Mad Jacks? You know, me and Lisa was down on, I don't know, Lake Barkley or something, pre-fishing for a, a, a Cabela's event, and it was hot. So we decided to just pull off onto this little marina and uh, get us a sandwich and a drink under the shade. And, and it was it was called something like Captain Jim's or something like that. And it just was a cool logo. And uh, on the way home, after we fished all day, on the way home, Lisa and I just shot names back and forth and we knew we wanted the little character and we wanted to, to, to come up with something and cap course captain jack was already done because jack sparrow from the uh disney movie yeah so we just we threw captain mad jacks in front of it and uh i had a vision of what i wanted to look at and i'm gonna tell you what this frank neely guy i don't know if you know him or not on facebook He's a he's an artist, and I contacted him, and and it didn't take me but about one time, two times to tell him my vision of what I wanted this guy to look like. And man, he nailed it. He nailed it. So that that's pretty much how that come about. We just uh, we wanted a different little brand uh, to expand on what we're doing right now. 
Tim Berger just Wait, posted a message, over. Steve. Huh? Steve Berger just posted a message. Of when are you going to get a vacation? And if that vacation would be up Kansas City way, all American catfish would take care of you and get you on the water. <laughs> I, you know, I don't know. This monster rod holder deal of mine has just snowballed in the last two years. Uh, we get about 15, 20 orders a day, no matter what. And, and I have a hard time leaving people hanging while I'm out there fishing. I think it messes up my mojo. So, you know, I, I, I just wait till I get my, my work done. But hopefully after this tournament, I did put so, too much stuff on my plate this year, but Hopefully after this tournament, I'll, I'll be able. My first plans is to go down to Nickajack. I found these. I found these cool cabins down on Nickajack that you can pull your boat up, and they're floaters. They're floating cabins, and you can just pull in a slip, tie to your boat to the dock, and go into your 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 cabin and, and sleep. And they got stoves and everything. So that's going to be my first trip here real soon. It, it's down on Nickajack. I'm gonna spend about three days. I mean, I, I know I'm due, overdue for some videos, and I apologize for that, guys. But like I say, work work uh, is gonna have to come first because I don't want to make a bunch of people mad because I'm out fishing and their rod holders are down at the shop keeping the floor down. So yeah, yep, uh, I, I totally understand. Yeah. But I, I'm going to try to get out to the Kansas area this year, actually, um, and fish with a, with a couple guys. Missouri, Missouri uh, area, but it's just got to all fall together. Hey, Lyle. Yes. While we have Steve on here, we need to spin that wheel. We've been an <laughs> hour into the show, and I got I got people sending me messages. When are you going to spin the wheel? Oh, so, hey, let let's spin that <laughs> wheel. Hey, Steve, pick me out a small low number. Say one to five. Four. Four. That'll work. We're going to randomize our group of people that is in the drawing tonight and see what we come up with. There's one, two, three, and four. And Ethan Starr, you are the lucky recipient of tonight's spin, the first spin. And let's see what he gets, Doc. All righty. We're going to burn that little pointer off here one of these days, Doc. Hey, man, that thing just sitting there flipping away. Fish life. Fish life. Fish Jody life. Harrison. Yes, sir. -y. I tell you, if you will contact Jody Harrison and let him know that you won a prize from the prize wheel, the rig wrap prize wheel on Catfish Weekly, Ethan, he will set you up with something and send it to you. And thank you so much for watching the show and playing our game. We're just having a blast with this thing. When did you get a wheel? We've had this. Glenn with Rig Rep called me one day and he said, man, I got this idea for your show. And and uh, we talked about it and I talked to Doc about it. And we thought it was a good idea and told Glenn we was going to look into it. And he he bought the wheel and sent it to us. Oh, okay. <laughs> and That's it's perfect. it's it's been a blast. And, we got oh, and we've got a bunch of sponsors on it. And so, oh, you know, yeah. So, oh, yeah. 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 So it's a anybody that wants to donate something, we put them up there. That's, well, that's, yeah, that's right. It is. We, we, we probably got a spot on there for Monster Rotter. Well, you know, I'll do something with you now. If you need something, I, I sure do it. I ain't uh, opposed to that at all. If you need, if you need <laughs> a prize. Well, we got some that's, that we're running out on, and uh, everybody don't want to stay involved with it all the time. But uh, it's it's a, a lot of fun. And uh, we've had a we've got some pretty good prizes on there, Steve. We got uh, we've given away a bunch of stuff, and and uh, we, we got a bunch of stuff on there. We got some of the guys that their names never been hit yet, you know. And everybody's uh, everybody's bucking for that. There's one spot on there that's a Mississippi River entry fee. Uh -huh. 
So, and it, that really pulled a lot of people in there. They're, they're yep. really looking at that. We've got the uh, B&M uh, B &M and Rod on there. Yeah, B&M yeah. Bump and Rod. So, I know that one night we had Glenn on the show. I, man, we, I thought we were going to catch that wheel on fire. We were going to jump in there and he goes, let's spin that wheel again. So, <laughs> we, yeah, we have a good prize for somebody. That's a $200 prize there, ain't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yep, it's it's really been a lot of fun. We've had a great time with it. We're going to be doing it for a long time to come. So uh, it's just been a lot of fun. Right. Well, I, I need to get my motel for that. Neither than that you think about it. I forgot all about that, but I need to get my hotel for that one. Uh, that oh, Mississippi River Monsters? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. get a hold of Angela. Yeah, I'm gonna go down and try it now. That new boat of mine, I don't know how it's gonna work on the Mississippi River, and it's it's. Uh, but I got that kicker motor. I'm gonna try to bump with that kicking motor. So I so think that's a great work. idea. I would like be interested to know how that works out for you. Yeah, well, I, I've noticed I got that big Altera on there, uh, big sixty inch shaft. But I noticed when I kick it in high gear, that shaft kind of just goes out that way. It kind of bends. So that boat's heavy, so yeah, I don't, I don't know if I can utilize that Altera in that three, four mile an hour current of the Mississippi River. So, right, I understand. Hey, I got a really neat message for you, Steve. What's that? Mindy, Mindy Geary sent me a message on Facebook, and she says to tell you hi and that she's okay with her husband spending money on your rod holders. What's her husband's name? Because that's Geary. Who? Jason, Jason? Geary. Yep. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's from Louisville or something, isn't he? Now he's from down in your down in there somewhere, but yeah, she don't yeah. mind if he spends money. What a deal. I'd be ordered up a whole bunch if yeah. that was the case. <laughs> Please don't Let's do get, that. I, I wanna go fishing. <laughs> <laughs> Let's get some new rod holders, baby. <laughs> yeah, give me give me two weeks. <laughs> Well, that's great. Well, well, Steve, it sounds like you have a wonderful pro, uh, tournament coming up. I, I really would have liked to have been there. It just didn't work out this time. But like I told you, anytime you have anything like that going on, if I can possibly do it, let me know. We'll make every effort we can to be there. And uh, anything I can help you to do to promote it, just let me know. Uh, and we're wishing you guys all the very best. Well, I appreciate it. We'll, uh, we'll keep you posted, and uh, I'm sure you'll see some pictures on Facebook. Hopefully, uh, hopefully it's going to – I know it's going to look good. Hopefully, uh, we can get the, the spectators in there. That's my biggest fear is the spectators not showing up. But um, I was just at a, a country store up the road, and I had some little girl says, well, I'm going to be at Taylorsville fishing this weekend. And she didn't know I had anything to do with this tournament. So hopefully, uh, you know, she was talking about the tournament. So uh, hopefully we'll get a lot of, a lot of folks out there. That's right. That'd be great. I, I wish you the best of luck. Uh, and I, I know it's going to be a great event. I, I hope to see it every year from now on. Well, we're going to, we're going to try it out, see how it rolls, but I appreciate you guys having me on. And if you need anything from me, holler at me. Well, that okay. will do it, Stephen. And like I say, if there's anything doc and I can do, you just let us know. We'll do it. Y'all take care. All right, buddy. Thank you. Thanks, Thanks Steve. Steve. Hey, how do I get out of here again? Just X out at the top. Where it says live? Oh, uh, I mean, no. You should I say it. Google hang, Hangouts. I think I got it. See you, fellas. See ya. Thanks, buddy. I got to get back over here and uh, get Glenn a, get a Glenn message sent. Well, Steve's got a, a really cool deal going on down there, Doc. I really wish that we could have made that tournament. I, I kind of feel bad that we didn't, but uh, uh, we have obligations and plans that have been made. So, uh, you know, you, you know, we had to we had to do that, and and uh, but we get it get it done. Uh, I'd like to have been there. I'd like to see all the spectators and stuff show up, and I'd like to see the yeah. uh, the the people helping each other, and I think that's really a good thing. And, and uh, I, I think he's going to have a, a, a good time down there. I think he's going to have a lot of 
a lot of a lot of participation, and I would almost bet that he has more people show up than he has entered right now. Yeah, especially when he's going to have it you on know. Saturday. You know, weigh in on Saturday sure. morning. Well, them them Sunday weigh ins, them Sunday morning weigh ins are tough, and it's hard to get very many spectators out there. And I think he's on to something with doing that on a Friday night. Now, uh, the only issue that I would have uh, for a lot of people are going to have to get off work. They're going to have to hustle on down there, but those guys will be fishing uh, after work and pre-fishing and getting their bait and stuff like that, and that's no different than they do at any other tournament. Right, yeah. But I think that his spectator uh, stuff will be a lot greater uh, simply because uh, – they don't have to worry about getting up and, and going down there and trying to make church and some of that stuff. And then that's important stuff for a lot of people. So, yeah. So uh, we'll see if Robert or uh, Robert, if Glenn gets in here in a minute, I send him a link and okay. uh, see if he can get on here. Uh, I will go back over there and send it to him another way uh, to try to help him out too. All right. I'll go ahead and give a uh, results uh, this past Absolutely. weekend. Uh, Rocky Fork Lake, Benson and so, Robert, a, yeah, right, Robert. Uh, first place with Mark Blowall and the the uh, I will go back to him another got, way. Got feedback uh, somehow. Uh, yeah. On my end or your end? Go ahead and give a, oh, uh, that's results. Glenn. Hey, Glenn. Hey guys. Uh, Rocky Fork Lake, Vincent and so, Can you turn your uh, volume down a little bit or something? We're getting a bunch of feedback. Yes, uh, I will go back. Hey, there we go. The feedback somehow. Yeah. Oh, that's Glenn. Hey, Glenn. Glenn, if you're watching the show, turn the your uh, turn your speakers off for the volume off on your uh, down YouTube. a little. Thing. Yeah. Yeah. Mute, mute your speaker on your YouTube page. Just shut your YouTube page off. That, that do it? How about now, Lyle? I, I think it's a lot better. Still got it, though. Just shut your YouTube page off. Just shut your YouTube page Are we there again? Are you still there, Glenn? I don't know what happened. I don't either. I can I can hear your dog drinking though. Yeah, he's over here lapping away. <laughs> <laughs> he must have got hot too. Yeah, she just let him out. So. I understand. Well, let's right, let's what, start, let's go ahead with your results, Doc. Okay, uh, first place, Mark Blovalt and uh, Randy Howard, fifty-seven point seven pounds. Can you? They had Big Fish, fifteen point eight. Second, Chris and Crystal Miller and Son. They had 40 pounds. Uh, let's see what else I got. JKV tournament, Evansville, Indiana, Dogtown Ramp. First place, Dale and Greg Edwards. Dale Kearns and Greg Edwards, 102.11. They had a big fish, which was 35.1. Uh, second, Mark Northern and Andrew Savage, 
point one two third. Stephen Heiss and Andy Williams, Jeremiah King, King, sixty six point one. Uh, fourth, John Land and Dan Fields, fifty six point thirteen, and fifth, Wayne and Connor King, fifty one point one five pounds. Uh, Flathead Blues on Hoover Reservoir, fifteen boats. First place, Terry Neal and Jerry and Jerry Justice, forty five point seven pounds. Big Fish, eighteen point seven. Big Fish. Second, Jake and Skip Rice, forty one point two. And third, Craig Shirley and Chris Finley, 39.4. And this coming Saturday, July 15th, Cat Chaser Series. Uh, first uh, night of the tournament. And uh, it's a qualifier for the Catfish Weekly National Tournament. That'll be held in 2018. This is going to be on Buckeye Lake. That'll be July 15th this weekend. Then on July 22nd, they're having a tournament on Logan Lake. The two uh, tournaments will be uh, combined, and the top five fisher fishermen will be eligible for the national tournament next year. Nice. And that's, nice. And that's all I got. All right. Glenn, are we set to go? Don't well, look like well, it. Lost him. Lost him. That's too bad because, boys and girls, I'm telling you, we got this little deal right here. I showed it to the dock. This is the new rig wrap sinker slide. And you can see it's no bigger than a normal yellow sinker slide. But the design on the inside is really cool. And the outside is really cool. And you don't have to cut your line to take it on and off. It's just the neatest thing, and we've been talking about this for a while, uh, and and Glenn sent me this one. This is one of the ones that he actually makes on a uh, 3D printer, and they're, these are not for sale. This is just one he printed off for me. I thought that stuff was just a uh, fig newton of my imagination. I didn't know they could actually make them, but I'm going to demonstrate to you how easy this works. And it's on, just like that. Can't come off, won't come off. That's a number seven snap on it. These are going to be the next big thing in sinker slides and in a lot of other things. They go on really quick. You just pinch your line and put it on, wrap it around the ends, and it's so small and economical, and I don't think that you can tear one up. They're made out of some kind of new copolymer nylon. They're outstanding. And when he was telling us about this, Doc, I thought, wow, what a deal. Uh, and, and I never could grasp what he was trying to tell me on how that they operate. But it's extremely simple. You just push that line down and, and pull it up. For, well, I, I lost my pinch, but uh, I'm going to try to show this where people can see it. You just pinch your line, and you put it in the slot and pull that line around on each side. And this is 60-pound monofilament, and it whoop, I dropped it off there. But it, it once it's on there, it's not going anywhere. It, it's just a neatest thing in the world. And and if you're interested in these, and you should be, you're going. You can make pre-orders. Just get on Rig Wrap's thing, and once it's on there, it's on there. It can't come off. It can't come off. And the way that they're designed, they have a track up in there. That it sets in, and I know it's hard to see on, on this little camera and all the stuff because I can't turn it right, but it's a double end deal, and it's got two little things that come out on each side to keep your line from going back and forth down through there. Uh, you can put braid on it. You can put monofilament on it. You can put – I don't know how well you can see that, Doc, but you can put some big line in there. I, I'm guessing 200-pound monofilament will fit it in there. Now, oh, wow. yeah. it, it's it's huge. And, and like Glenn had told me that the tolerances on this are not very good because it's made on 3D printer. I'm pretty impressed with this. So I can only imagine what the real deal is going to be. Yeah. And uh, I can't wait to get my hands on something to use. And 
uh, I was going to take it with me this weekend. I knew if I took it, I'd have to use it. And not knowing anything about 3D printers and what they make, I was afraid that I would either tear it up, which I didn't want to do because I couldn't show nobody, or worse than that, I'd lose it before I ever got to the fish with it, and, and then I'd really be upset, you know. Yeah. Uh, but I'm really excited about this. I think he's spent a lot of quality time making this, and the fact that it is, you can tell, there's there's my first, my index finger, and you can tell how big that is. Yeah. And that hole will take a big piece of line to it. So it's really, really, it's going to be a, a major player in this industry. I'm, I'm wound up about it, and, and I can't wait till he gets them in so we can start getting them out. And me and you'll get some of them and try them out, Doc. I'm just, I'm just thrilled with those. I just think they're outstanding product. And, and uh, maybe we can get Glenn lined up next week and get him on here when we get done talking with Matt Sanders. I know uh, we had some issues with stuff tonight, and, and uh, we'll, we'll make it happen. Don't worry. We'll get all that done up and yeah. and, and straightened out. It is. Uh, he just sent a message saying, sorry, all my system locked up. So. Oh, okay. Well, there we go. So we'll, we'll get that straightened out and, and, and make it happen and go. Cliff Miller, I know you're watching the show. I sent uh, Alex a, a message. Uh, I haven't got a return on it. If you have the results from yesterday's uh, Twisted Cat Outdoor Tournament, would you please send that to me? I would greatly appreciate it. Uh, I do have the results from All American Catfish out of Kansas City. First place went to Joe Roberts and Jackson Van Leer. Second place, Mike Berglund and Ryan Guffey. Third place, Eddie Henney and Adam Funk. <coughs> Fourth place, Jason Clear and Kayla Kratzner. <coughs> I'm getting parched. And fifth place to Brian Branstetter and Brad Brody. Uh, I think they had a pretty good turnout there. The guys are – Tim and them's got it going on up there uh, in Kansas City. they got a lot of wonderful things happening up there. And uh, we're trying to get uh, – he's working really hard. And he just told me – uh, I'll get this information while I'm here, too, uh, that there is going to be another qualifying event that they are just uh, paid entry fee for, for the August 12th tournament in Kansas City at Call Point. It's also going to be a national qualifying event, another night tournament, so get a hold of Tim Berger with All American Cat Fishing, and uh, he can give you all the specifics for that. So it's going to be a really, really neat deal. Man, asking you still receive, Doc? I got it made. Cindy must have been watching. She heard that I was parched and brought the tea pitcher in here to fill me up. <laughs> you just yeah, can't well, beat a deal like that. Yeah, and you know, when you talk about that, we're we're drinking water and stuff like that. I mean, you get dry while you're sitting here talking. You, you really do, and, and uh, uh, you just got to have something to drink all the time, seems to me, like or I do. What's that? Oh. Do I talk too much, Doc? You talk a lot, but that's okay. What? Okay, well, it's a good thing. <laughs> <laughs> it, yeah, it, it'd be kind of quiet if you weren't talking. So that I I can talk, I but uh, you know. <laughs> what do you got for Doc's tip of the night? Doc's tip of the night: Make sure you have a throwable cushion on board your boat. Uh, it's one of the requirements, uh, I believe, all over the United States that you have a throwable cushion. Yes. And uh, and they can't be you can't have rips and tears in them. You know, even though they'll do the they'll float and stuff like that, they. They, they really look at them and make sure that the stitching is uh, in good shape. So they're not that much, uh, probably eight bucks. And uh, it's one of the requirements. So uh, I had a buddy of mine got uh, busted this past weekend because he didn't have a throwable on there. So just uh, make well, sure you have a throwable cushion on board. That's a great idea, Doc, and a great tip. Uh, I would mention one thing with that, though. 
those throwables have to be out where they're readily accessible due to Coast Guard regulations. So if you have it and it's put up and where nobody can get to it or you can't find it, uh, it ain't much better than not, not having one. So make sure that you've got it and where everybody knows where it's at because, hey, any of us could fall over at any time. Okay, yeah. Good. What do you think, Doc? One more time tonight? Yeah, let's go do it one more time. The number six. All righty. That's not too bad. One. Two. Three. Four. Five. Six. Winner this time is Amy Thomason Williams. She puts in about every week, so I'm glad that she uh, got her name picked. And let's see what she wins, Doc. All right. No, no, don't stick your nose on that, no. <laughs> Amy, you just won yourself a B&M bumping rod. B&M bumping rod, all right. Heck yeah. What you need to do is contact George Young Jr. Tell him you won the bumping rod that he was giving away on Catfish Weekly. That's a great prize, Doc. Yes, it is. Yeah, because it, it, George a great won one prize. of those to Banks Tournament. And that was a nice rod. That was a really nice rod. So. Well, you know, some of these guys that's been on this wheel deal since the beginning, Doc, we still haven't landed on their number. Right. Uh, and George contacted, and he wanted to, to be a part of this in a couple of different ways, and I thank him very much for everything he does. Uh, and now Amy has won herself a new B&M bumping rod, and that is really cool. Good deal. Absolutely. Let me see if Cliff sent me this information before we, but I don't see it. Cliff must have got off, got out of there. Uh, I don't, I don't have the names, and and I messaged him, but we'll try to get that all to you for next week. Uh, but up around Mississippi River, it was really, really hot, but we had a good time, and that's what it's all about. We would like to thank Brad Cox and Steve Douglas. And Glenn, even though we're going to have to get him back in here for being a part of the show tonight, don't we, Doc? Yeah. And you can tell we're starting to get long-winded. We're at an hour and 25 minutes. So. <laughs> yeah, it is. But it's so good to have you guys. Yeah, you know, man, everybody's Brad hanging is, right in here with us. Yeah, Brad's got a great tournament going on over there that benefits all of our veterans, and that's a wonderful thing. Steve's doing some wonderful things for – for his Captain Mad Jack's tournament. He's trying to get a lot more people involved and trying to get the word out about catfish conservation. And, and uh, it, it's really a cool deal. And I hope that we can help him do some more stuff down the road. Uh, Steve does a lot for our sport, so we need to help him uh, anytime we get a chance. Yep, Ex sounds great. Excited about these, Doc. I'm excited about these. Yeah. So. Next Monday night, Matt Sanders. We'll try to get Glenn on here after we get done visiting with Matt. Uh, we're going to have a surprise for next week, too. Matt's going to give away, while he's on the show, give away a free entry to the Waverly tournament they're having uh, with his tournament series. So you be sure and get in here. Uh, Central Missouri Cats is going to give away an entry fee, an entry for the Waverly tournament. You don't want to miss that. Besides that, we're going to have Doc's tip of the week, and we're going to have we're going to be spinning that prize wheel. So make sure that you tune in next night, next week, next yeah. Monday night at seven. Yeah. And if we get Absolutely. Glenn on here, it's it's no telling how many times that we'll fire up that wheel. That's exactly right. Uh, Glenn likes to see that wheel spun. Yeah. So. So do I. Lang, I'm Lyle Stokes. Thanks. Yeah, me too. <laughs> Thanks for watching Catfish Weekly. See you next week. Thanks, everybody.